Hi, everybody. My name is Cynthia Golden, and today it is my pleasure to welcome you to the fourth annual celebration to recognize the winners of the Provost Award for Diversity in the Curriculum. This award recognizes faculty whose efforts to strengthen their teaching practice by incorporating diversity in the curriculum and creating inclusive learning environments have resulted in changes of impact. So this year, our celebration is a little different. We have shifted our timeline a bit. Rather than inviting you all to our traditional luncheon in December, we're here gathering over Zoom in February. And we are so glad you all could join us today. I saw from our registration list that our gathering includes many past winners, as well as members of our faculty who have been active participants in many of the university's diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and events. As is our tradition, we will kick off this event with a few remarks from vice, our Vice Provost for, for Faculty Diversity and Development, John Wallace. John will then introduce our speaker, Pitt's new Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Clyde Pickett. And following his remarks, Provost Cud will present this year's awards. At the conclusion of the presentation of awards today, we'll have a special recognition of the team that developed and delivered Pitt's new anti-Black racism course that launched this fall. As a final note, this session is being recorded, so you'll have the opportunity to see it later if you'd like. So let's get started. Um, at this time, I will turn the program over to John Wallace, Vice Provost for Faculty Diversity and Development. Thank you, Cynthia, so much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. I'm really excited. This is my first opportunity to introduce this event. Uh, so really excited to have the chance to celebrate and elevate the work of our faculty around the important issues of diversity in our curriculum. As we know, um, the classroom is the centerpiece of the work that we do here at the University of Pittsburgh. And so therefore, this award is really designed as a tangible statement of our commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion in our curriculum. And so this award recognizes and showcases the amazing work that our faculty have done uh, over the course of this year. It emphasizes the importance of inclusive curricula and inclusive pedagogy as uh, core to our equitable and just uh, efforts to create an equitable, just uh, community. And it's really, of course, meaningful to have this event uh, highlighted during Black History Month. And so uh, as I'm concluding uh, my general remarks, want to, of course, encourage all of you to uh, participate and engage in the diversity in the curriculum activities sponsored by the Teaching Center and, of course, the other uh, full range of diversity, equity, inclusion events that occur around the campus. And uh, now it's, of course, my privilege to introduce uh, our speaker for today, Clyde Wilson Pickett. As you know, Clyde serves as the University of Pittsburgh Vice Chancellor for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, where he leads the university's comprehensive DEI and inclusive strategy. Uh, Dr. Pickett enjoyed a, enjoy, uh, joined Pitt after following a national search uh, where he previously served as the chief diversity officer for the Minnesota State Colleges and University System. Prior to his work in Minnesota, he included uh, a variety of other positions, including the Community Colleges of Allegheny County, where he was the special assistant to the president for diversity and inclusion and Director of Multicultural Development and Director of New Student Orientation at Northern, at Ohio Northern University, and additionally roles at Moorhead State University and the University of Kentucky. Clyde holds a doctorate from the University of Pittsburgh School of Education, a master's from Moorhead State University, and he did his undergraduate work in agricultural economics at the University of Kentucky. So it is my distinct privilege and honor to welcome Dr. Clyde Wilson Pickett. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. Um, of course, excited to be here for what is my first and hopefully many opportunities to acknowledge the work of our faculty. Uh, as you highlight, uh, the classroom is the epicenter for the work that we do to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as you also mentioned, Dr. Wallace, uh, as we are in February, of course, uh, we encourage our colleagues to um, participate in a host of Black History Month events and initiatives that are being offered across the university. 
You know, certainly I, I want to begin and start my remarks with offering sincerest gratitude to the University Center for Teaching and Learning for the opportunity to join you as we celebrate and elevate the work of our exceptional faculty uh, and to really prioritize the innovative and inclusive strategies and efforts they are making uh, with regard to pedagogy in the classroom and to think about how we prioritize innovation in diversity, equity, inclusion here at the University of Pittsburgh. Often when given the opportunity to have a platform and think about our strategic efforts, I remind our colleagues that the classroom is paramount and center to the work that we do. Uh, and uh, I, I recognize that as we embrace the understanding of this work, we acknowledge that diversity is a fact, to be inclusive is to take action, and that equity is an outcome that requires commitment. And that commitment to advance knowledge and learning starts in the classroom. Uh, it's in that, uh, in that uh, spirit, I should note, that uh, I wish to, of course, extend appreciation to Provost Cudd for the commitment and the work as it relates to uh, our endeavors to promote uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in the um, pillars of, of the work inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, and certainly to extend appreciation to Dr. Wallace, uh, both of you for your continued leadership and partnership and support as we move forward collectively with advancing uh, equity, diversity, inclusion as pillars uh, in the work of becoming more focused on uh, how we are an anti-racist institution and a more inclusive institution. Uh, may each of us be reminded that uh, diversity, equity, inclusion are essential components in achieving our mission to improve the world through knowledge. As uh, an educational entity, uh, it is our duty as a university to create a space where our students and our faculty have the ability to achieve at their highest levels of success. And it is our responsibility to provide them with opportunities where the unique qualities and characteristics are valued and not considered barriers in achieving optimal success. Certainly we understand that the learning experiences for our students should be enriched and it should provide them with the tools they will need as they advance toward their professional goals. And more importantly, as we develop them into being members of society, who contribute holistically and serve their respective communities, that we should consistently engage our students in challenging them in thoughtful means and inclusive means. And that we prioritize an effort to expand their interest and enhance their desire in greater ways for knowledge that is diverse, knowledge that is inclusive, and in ways that we prioritize uh, equity with regard to outcomes that we prioritize that the greatest level of knowledge is reached when we have deeper understanding for the perspectives of all. In, in doing this, and as we examine uh, and acknowledge our time today, our goal should be to build on a foundation where our students not just gain uh, a degree in a particular endeavor of study, but to invest in lifelong scholarship and in lifelong service, and in diversity in thought and diversity in perspective. These actions should permeate our classrooms, our campus, with the intention that they should be incorporated in all facets of the university experience. They should be the driving force in how we shape and mold minds, and how we are entrusted to educate and to edify. Uh, to engage in this endeavor uh, means that we must first prioritize and ensure the work that we have done in creating an inclusive learning environment, a learning environment where the issues of equity and justice are not just considered, but are integrated into the culture of our institution and most assuredly uh, embedded into the exchange in teaching and learning. There should be a university-wide awareness and commitment to the cross-cultural development of our students and to all of those whom learn and exchange at the University of Pittsburgh. 
In short, our education and the learning endeavors should be a tool to inform and a tool to include. And certainly we know that these tools must include curriculum and exchange. Now more than ever, as we prioritize and amplify the work of diversity, uh, and as we advance our efforts to be more equitable in outcomes, we see the increasing episodes of divisiveness and discrimination uh, in campuses across the country and globally. Uh, we must approach our work with the conviction that equity matters, that justice matters. It matters at the University of Pittsburgh, it matters in our classrooms, and it matters beyond. It matters in our day-to-day -day exchanges, and it matters in how we develop the minds that ultimately will help shape and transform the world. This afternoon, as we recognize those faculty who have undertaken this charge, those individuals that have created opportunities to incorporate inclusiveness into instruction in their courses, we recognize the importance of their impact, the impact on curriculum, the impact on broader society, and of course, the impact on our university commitment as we advance the strategic pillars of equity and our goals. Increasingly, we understand that we exchange, engage, and learn in a multicultural, diverse society. We understand that applying culturally responsive approaches to teaching and learning benefits all students. It benefits those individuals of all abilities. And diverse curriculum exposes our students to varied cultures while simultaneously validating the importance of those cultures. Uh, it fortifies our institutional commitment and challenges us to address the areas where there have been issues with achieving parity, where there have been issues with eliminating systems that support bias and oppression with regard to systemic bias, including racism and racist behaviors. A commitment to how we prioritize inclusion in the classroom, a commitment to how we cre create foundational uh, excellence for advancing broad success prioritizes that these are pillars that we must embrace. The idea is that the methods of teaching and learning simultaneously create more equitable opportunities for students from historically underrepresented backgrounds, while also expanding the cultural humility for those of majority backgrounds is a vital consideration. This commitment undergirds the requirements of what will be a pluralistic society, the society that we aspire to be, and the society that can only be brought forward by the work that we do in the classroom. The complex thinking, the complex ability to work across difference, and increased civic participation with decreased prejudice are direct outcomes of inclusive curriculum and an inclusive classroom. Our colleagues who instruct and develop the inclusive curriculum and who remind us that inclusion is a priority to learning are some of the individuals that we are recognizing today. Now more than ever, we must amplify those voices and bring attention to the work that we're doing. While we know that is especially true for students who have been excluded from the full experience of the classroom, it's also true for those individuals uh, who are often included more proactively in the classroom. To create inclusive learning environments through the curriculum and in all fields, our colleagues are working to consider how they can incorporate uh, diversity into their courses and more specifically into their teaching practices. So as we work together as a community to effectively combat structural disparities and equities, as educators, we must be committed to fostering a new priority for equity with new innovative methods and celebrating the differences that each of us brings to our environment. We acknowledge our varied experiences and the cultures that invest in, that bring to, and ultimately elevate 
and inclusive and robust university community. It is our collective investment that yields to success. It is also that collective investment that provides the opportunity to cultivate more intentional and authentic relationships throughout our learning community. We advance those opportunities with regard to teaching and learning, and certainly we do that as a broad community of understanding. We understand that that commitment opens up new ideas, new perspectives, and a new train of thought to challenge stereotypes, an opportunity for us to challenge preconceived judgments, and the opportunity to challenge often ill-informed perspectives, including racism and oppression. In a broader sense, the work that we invest in now, the work that we invest in in the classroom, creates a more robust and inclusive institution. One that simply put is a better institution and one that is fortified by the educators that we take the opportunity to honor today. Those individuals who are leading the way for a better community for all of us. Individually, it is my belief that our educational experiences, our investments should be life altering uh, and they should be done so in such a way that's positive. It should be uplifting to encourage our educators and our students to work together for the common good. Uh, the idea and the knowledge that our students and the, the skills that they acquire at our institution the skills that they acquire in our classroom, the learning is critical to the decisions that they will make as they move forward in their lives and the potential to dictate if they will contribute to the advancement of creating more inclusive and more just societies in the time ahead. The societies where all of us are valued and where we all belong together. So of course, I'm encouraged to be a part of an institution where we celebrate diversity in curriculum. I'm encouraged to be a part of an institution where equity, diversity, and inclusion are not just ideologies that we discuss for mere theoretical purpose, but rather our strategic values supported by our colleagues who are in the classroom, by our leadership, and our practice in our day-to-day -day interact interactions, including in the classroom. We recognize that this is an imperative at the University of Pittsburgh, and beyond. We look forward to the opportunity to seize the road ahead and to impact broad change. I'm grateful to join you today to be a part of a university that has committed time and celebrating those who are advancing work in this space. As an institution that celebrates diversity, may we acknowledge the work of the champions that are moving the work in the classroom forward. May we continue to give platform to their active voice and their commitment as faculty to be in the arena together. And may we share their wisdom and be a part of action. I challenge our community to be a part of uplifting their message, to carry forward their commitments and continue to celebrate the differences that we make together. To think about the impact that their efforts and what we acknowledge today transforms a global community of learning into action. And may we remember that we celebrate their time in an effort to bring our work together. After all, our lives and experiences are transformed when we invest in creating inclusive environments for which all of us value. Once again, I salute the individuals who are acknowledged and who we are here to support today. Uh, and I offer you my ongoing commitment to supporting this work in the time ahead. May we all be unified together. May we continue to prioritize inclusion and may we be a better community for it. Thank you for your time, hail to Pitt. And I now pass the platform on to our provost and cut. Thank you very much, Clyde. That was a great presentation. And I, I think those were really inspiring words um, you probably didn't know this, but every time you used your right arm, I think, to move the cursor on your computer, the word love appeared right behind you. And that was really a special uh, uh, accent to, to what you were talking about. 
Those were inspiring words. We're so delighted that you're here at Pitt. I look forward to all that you and your team are gonna do in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and all of the important work that is gonna stretch our university in transformative ways. We know from the numbers of faculty who are engaged in the events and activities focused on inclusive teaching and on building inclusive curricula that Pitt faculty are making special efforts to affect real change in, curse, in courses and in the learning experiences designed for our students. And today we wanna to give special recognition to a few faculty members for their significant diversity and inclusion efforts. The Provost's Award for Diversity in the Curriculum is a way to especially call out their efforts. And I am always very pleased to be able to be a part of this celebration and to learn about the innovative things that our, our uh, faculty colleagues are doing. So sponsored by the Office of the Provost and the University Center for Teaching and Learning, the awards are intended to recognize faculty whose efforts to strengthen diversity and inclusion in the classroom have resulted in changes of impact. These changes are in areas such as updated curriculum, expanded cultural awareness, development of teaching methods that are especially inclusive and interactive, and consciously created learning environments that are welcoming and inclusive. All full-time and part-time faculty were eligible to apply for this award. To be considered, faculty must have taught the modified course or revised curricula and assessed the impact of those modifications within the last three years. Preference was given to those who had recently engaged in our programs, such as the Provost Diversity Institute, teaching inclusively workshops or the ex extended diversity experience seminar. In the application, faculty were asked to demonstrate how they have made diversity and inclusiveness part of their teaching practice and the impact of those efforts. A faculty committee comprised of previous award winners reviewed and rated the applications and recommended award winners to me. We had a fantastic group of applications and I wanna congratulate all applicants for their efforts to integrate diversity and inclusion into their courses and curriculum. The selection committee's task was certainly not an easy one. And now I'm very pleased to announce the faculty winners of the 2020 Provost's Award for Diversity in the Curriculum. I'm going to introduce each winner or set of winners and each will make a brief statement. So the first winner is Thomas Akiva from the School of Education. He's being recognized for making equity and anti-racism a central focus in the EDD program's on-ramp course and subsequently in the entire EDD curriculum. Congratulations, Dr. Akiva. Would you like to say a few words about the impact of your work? Yes, thank you, Dr. Cudd. Hi, I'm Tom Akiva, and I'm an associate professor in the School of Education. I direct our EDD, a large doctoral program, which our keynote speaker completed, um, that focuses on preparing change agents in education and health. Our students are mid-career leaders, ranging from school principals to higher education professionals to directors of community-based nonprofits. The program starts each summer with an intensive six credit experience we call on-ramp. It's kind of like summer camp for grown-ups, but with writing assignments. In 2019, we worked to make equity and anti-racism core to this course. I facilitated workshops, we added related assignments, and we invited several guests to share equity perspectives with our students. This then led to changes in the overall program. Striving for equity and justice is now a guiding principle for the entire EDD program. I'm deeply humbled to receive this award. I've been privileged to collaborate with co-instructors and we work as a team to strengthen what we offer to our students. And we have an amazing leader, Dean Valerie Kinlock, that supports and challenges our school to center this important work. Thank you. Congratulations. So the next winner is Dr. Kayla Booth from the School of Computing and Information. She's being recognized for enhancements to the iSchool Inclusion Institute, which is a diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative that prepares students from underrepresented populations 
for graduate study and careers in information and computing. Congratulations, Dr. Booth. And now I'll invite you to make a few comments on the Inclusion Institute work that you've done. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much uh, to everyone who made today possible. It's an honor to, to be here and receive this award. Um, I have the pleasure of serving as the PI and director of the iSchool Inclusion Institute, or I3 for short, and we are funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Um, we are a national undergraduate research and leadership development program that prepares underrepresented students for careers and graduate study in information and computing. Each year, 25 students enrolled in colleges and universities across the country, majoring in all different majors, um, are selected to become I3 scholars. The program includes two summer residencies here at the School of Computing and Information at the University of Pittsburgh, as well as two international peer-reviewed conferences where students submit and present their research in the same venues as faculty and doctoral students, uh, positioning them as the next generation of leaders in our field. We're in our 11th year now, and I could talk about a lot of exciting statistics or success metrics, but what I'm most proud of is uh, how my team and I, who are phenomenal, um, I work with wonderful colleagues. Um, you know, we really work to reimagine the traditional undergraduate research program model from a single summer experience to a 20 month long equity centered program that really allows us to build authentic relationships uh, where students can bring their whole selves and where we maintain a close knit community over many years. It starts in undergrad, but it moves, you know, into a whole lifetime. Thank you very much. Next, I'll introduce. Juja Horvat and Christine Wonkiri Hale from the School of Dental Medicine, who are being recognized for guiding students in the development of curricular content for the module, When the Appointment is No Longer About Dentistry, to help students address microaggressions and prepare them to handle and respond to inappropriate patient comments and behaviors in a culturally sensitive manner. Congratulations to Dr. Horvat and Dr. Wankiri Hale. Please take a moment to explore, to describe your work to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, we are very excited to uh, receive this award. And thank you for sharing our excitement as we are celebrating together here. Our curricular mod module deals with culturally insensitive situ situations in the clinic when the appointment is no longer about dentistry. The idea originated from a student and became a student-driven component of the curriculum. Under our mentorship, senior peers teach first-year dental students about how to handle inappropriate patient behavior. It has been a rewarding experience to see how a student project has grown into such an impactful part of our curriculum and contributes to the education of new dental students. So thank you again. We recognize that including our students' voices in our diversity curriculum is unique and is in fact a privilege for which we're very grateful. So we'd like to thank our Dean, our colleagues, and our dedicated team of staff for their ongoing support in allowing our students to teach alongside us in the curriculum. We also want to thank our students because without them and without their enthusiasm for education and their dedication to teaching their own peers, we would not be here today to accept this award. Finally, we'd like to thank our families as well um, to support um, the work that we have with our students and being there alongside with us. So we're very thankful to receive this award. Thank you again. Next up, I'd like to present Lauren Jonkman from the School of Pharmacy. She's being recognized for integrating social justice and health equity into the population health and management core course in the PharmD curriculum to ensure that all students have the knowledge and skills to identify and address inequities. Con congratulations on this award, Dr. Junkman. Please say a few words about your work. Thank you so much. I'm so incredibly humbled to be selected as one of the recipients of the 2020 Provost Award for Diversity in the Curriculum. I've had the honor of serving as the course coordinator for the population health portion of the population health and management course, which is a required course for third professional year PharmD students in the School of Pharmacy. We live in a world that's inequitable, um, something that's become increasingly evident to many more people during the past year. 
Health profession students have a duty to respond to health inequities that stem from underlying factors in our system and society and result in premature death and disease for, for so many. Um, over the last several years, I've been working to be more intentional in my teaching to focus to um, infuse a focus on health equity and social justice into all aspects of the population health course in hopes of achieving these goals beyond the classroom for students. I was incredibly lucky to have wonderful students in the fourth professional year, um, Hajar Mohammedin and Tai Nguyen, who worked with me over the summer to transition the course for a virtual setting um, using a general flip, flip classroom approach with team-based learning. And this transition has created additional opportunities to be more explicit in our work, allowing for in-depth discussion and participation in complex areas of health equity, including racism and medicine. Um, further, the restructure allowed for more focused emphasis on the social, social determinants of health through poverty simulation and other practical activities and insights into the needs of people through an inclusion medicine practicum with standardized patients addressing issues around health beliefs, cross-cultural negotiation, and, and healthcare for marginalized populations. Again, thank you so much for this honor, and I look forward to continually pushing the integration of health equity across the curriculum. Wonderful, thank you. Next up, I'd like to introduce Andrew McCormick and Dara Mendez from the Schools of Medicine and Public Health. They are being recognized for enhancing clinical experience courses for first year students by introducing a book club, which explored the history and ongoing practice of racism within medicine. Congratulations, Dr. McCormick and Dr. Mendez. Please take a moment to tell us about your project. Dr. Cudd, thank you for, for having me and Dr. Mendez. Huh? And we're, we're so thankful for this award. We wanted to kind of talk uh, back and forth about a couple themes um, from this, this experience that we had and, and what we learned. So the first one was really collaboration. Um, often in academic medicine, we sit in silos. Um, we, we kind of sit in one area and we're not able to kind of work out of our own experience. But really one of the lessons we learned was collaboration. Um, collaboration started in my home. So I wanted to first thank my wife, Rena McCormick, who is the true visionary in our family, uh, challenger and also connector because um, this started with discussions at home, uh, but she was the connector that connected me to Dr. Mendez. And also um, what we would really like to highlight is the importance of our community partners. Um, as we partnered with Healthy Start Pittsburgh um, with uh, Ms. Jada Shirell and Ms. Demia Horsley, who um, really helped bring this um, outside of the academic world and into the community where work is done. So collaboration was a key to our experience. I also would like to thank um, and show um, appreciation to the faculty across the School of Medicine, as well as the Graduate School of Public Health, who were really instrumental in making this work possible. And then obviously the current learners, the medical school learners um, who have taken this course, but also were the ones behind really pushing, um, instituting a curriculum that included um, the reading of medical racism, as well as a number of other things that we'll talk about. Um, and the impetus of the work that Andrew mentioned began in, in 2019, and really our goal was to try and shift the curriculum, shift the culture and medicine and health to help address medical racism, and that this work is not one course and one done or one book and one done, um, that it, it's work across the career, it's across the lifetime, um, and has um, features throughout. And I would like to say that you know, one of the things that we really wanted to center after learning this experience was the voices of our medical students. Uh, and one of the voices they said was that this was foundational knowledge, just like they go to anatomy and physiology and biochemistry, that understanding about racism and racism in medicine and discrimination in medicine is a key factor for how they can offer true health by recognizing and being anti-racist, by being anti-discrimination. Right, and finally, not only the knowledge that is provided, but the tools that are really critical and important in shifting this work that we do, you know, as practitioners in medicine and practitioners in public health and um, extending to other health fields. That continuous self-reflection is critical. Um, a, a key element of critical race theory and, and public health critical race practice um, and that specific actions are also warranted and really key and critical. So taking what they're learning in the classroom and then applying it in those settings, which is even more important and, and prevalent with our global pandemic, 
right in the intersection with the movement for Black Lives um, and addressing racism across a number of sectors. So finally, we want to thank um, the Office of the Provost um, and the University um, Teaching and Learning Center, and congratulations to our esteemed colleagues who are also recipients of this award. Thank you. Wonderful. Congratulations again. And please join me in congratulating the 2020 Diversity in the Curriculum Award winners. Um, I think we can all clap and maybe that'll come through. But anyway, I will clap and I will say congratulations. And uh, I'm sure that everyone joins me in that. Um, really, your message, uh, Dr. McCormick and Dr. Mendez, that racism is foundational. Understanding racism is really foundational is a great segue uh, to our final um, appreciation. I'd now like to take a moment to recognize those people who were instrumental in the successful launch of the anti-Black racism course this past fall. Over the summer, I tasked a committee of exceptional scholars led by Dr. Yolanda Covington Ward to create a class consisting of a series of lectures on systemic anti-Black racism and the anti-racist measures that we can take to end it. They responded brilliantly with an amazing new learning opportunity called Anti-Black Racism, History, Ideology, and Resistance. It's a course we felt so that it's so important, so foundational, that it should be required for credit and free of charge for our first year students and made available for any enrolled student at Pitt, as well as to the broader Pittsburgh community. The students benefiting from this course and those who teach this course are part of what I hope is a historic transformation at Pitt. In the fall semester alone, 5,054 students were enrolled. What I find especially impressive about the efforts made on the part of Dr. Covington Ward and the exceptional committee she led is the integration of a variety of scholarly disciplines, spanning the humanities, social sciences, the arts, education, social work, and public health to explore themes to help students understand how anti-Black racism functions in US society. Now I'm going to uh, acknowledge each person who played an, an important part in this outstanding effort. And I'm going to name each one of them. Yolanda Covington Ward, Bree Newsom Bass, Eric Biko, Andrew Bentley, Keisha Blaine, Michael Bridges, Waverly Duck, Alexandra Finley, Nicole Mitchell Gant, Tiffany Gary Webb, Tony Gaskew, Felix Germain, Michael Goodhart, James Hughley, Don Lundy Martin, Darnell Moore, Lizette Munoz Rojas, Audrey Morrell, Aluchi Okafor, Lee Patel, Jawan Zarand, Carl Redwood, Elena Roberts, Kaniqua Robinson, Cheryl Ruffin, Stacy Wood, Gabby Yearwood. What an incredible team. Thank you all for making this course a reality. And now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Covington Ward to make a few remarks. Yolanda? Hi, thank you, Anne. Thank you so much for that gracious uh, introduction and for recognizing all of the members of our team who contributed to making this course a success. So um, I just wanted to recognize the Committee on Anti-Black Racism and Transformative Pedagogy who, who helped to get put this together, as well as all of the um, faculty, staff, and community members who contributed lectures to the course, and the staff, of course, who worked so hard to administer the course. Our committee's vision for the course was for it to explain how racism impacts the daily lives of Black people while highlighting the agency and creativity of Black communities, while also privileging an intersectional approach. What I'd like to do now is to just do a quick demonstration of why a course on anti-Black racism is so necessary, using the story of my own family as an example. 
So a course on anti-Black racism exposes not only individual attitudes and prejudices, but also how racism is embedded in our social institutions and our social structures, shaping life chances and opportunities. Lecture one, race as a, a construct and concept by Waverly Duck from the Department of Sociology lays this out very clearly from the course. My family has been in the United States since the 1700s. Both sides of my family were enslaved in North Carolina. Lecture three, the era of enslavement by Alexandra Finley from the Department of History describes what life was like for people of African descent under this terrible institution. My maternal great grandmother was educated only through elementary school and worked as a housekeeper most of her life. At the age of 20, my grandmother left North Carolina for New York on a bus, joining millions of Black Americans who fled the South chasing dreams of a better life in the North and in the West as part of the Great Migration, a topic that's part of Lecture 4 by Elena Roberts from the Department of History. Black immigrants from the Caribbean and from Africa and other parts of Latin America also came to many of these cities, as shown in Lecture 12 by Felix Germain from the Department of Africana Studies. My grandmother came to the South Bronx in New York City, where my mother, Diane, was born. My mother went to Morris High School, a school where collapsing ceilings, mold, and secondhand textbooks were part and parcel of daily life. Lecture 11 by Lee Patel from the School of Education lays out the ways that anti-Blackness pervades even our school systems. When my grandmother eventually got her own apartment, her options were limited. Lecture 10 by Carl Redwood, a housing advocate here in Pittsburgh and a Pitt alum, explores how housing is shaped by race, reminding us that government programs subsidized housing in the suburbs for white families for decades, while black families had little to no access to such mortgages due to redlining, racial covenants, and other practices. These are just a few examples of how learning about anti-Black racism is not an exercise in abstraction. Anti-Black racism is woven into the very fabric of our nation, from the era of enslavement to Jim Crow to our modern day fight for racial justice and equality at a global level. I, along with members of the committee, am proud to have played a part of the effort to educate so many around such important issues. Thank you so much for this recognition. So thank you, Dr. Covington Ward. And I should mention that um, for those of you who are interested, if you have not seen um, the lectures and the course materials for this course, they are linked from the provost website. So um, you're welcome to go there and, and take a look at them. So this concludes today's program. Thank you very much for attending. Um, congratulations to all the winners and to everyone who was recognized today. Your plaques are coming in the mail, so you should get them soon if you haven't already. Um, I'd like to thank Provost Cudd and Vice Provost Wallace and, and Vice Chancellor Pickett for participating today. And I'd like to acknowledge the work of the selection committee and all the faculty who submitted their work for consideration for this award. You're truly making a difference here at Pitt. Finally, let me say thank you to the staff in the Teaching Center, especially to Joy Hart and the staff of Academic Digital Media for doing all the behind the scenes work to make today's event possible. So, Provost Cudd and award winners, will you please stay on this call for a few minutes um, so we can take a group photo. And the rest of you, thank you for coming and have a terrific weekend. <laughs>